welcome to the Indie Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I'm your host, Norman Sancho. Joining me today is Silver Quill. It's the end times. The interwebs have abandoned us. Abandon all hope, all ye who surf here. Oh no. They're eating her. Then they eat me. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, Norman, I think Celestia is acting as rubbed off on you. A bit, a bit. <laughs> so anywho, in this week's uh, podcast, we are going to do a discussion. And the topic of discussion is, why do fans want things to end? Uh, this discussion is sponsored by Myself Like, thank you my friend. And yes, we're going to take this topic in a few different ways. And I believe that we're going to go for... Uh, the more general sense in terms of multiple fandoms instead of focusing on the pony one, right? If you wish. The, you, I think what you say of one, you could easily say of others. True that, true that. But at the same time, too, there's certain aspects from one on the others. But still, uh, if we think of something, we'll carry it over. So, anywho, uh, let's not dilly dally and hop right into it. Why do fans think that way, my friend? Like, why is that mindset there? Wouldn't fans want something to carry on? I mean, if a show or a title or a whatever it is is good, why want it to end? Well, because it generates drama. And I've been listening to Eckhart Tolle, who is a philosopher and psychoanalyst. Uh, and he talks a lot about the ego and how it, the illusionary self, and it needs constant drama to validate its existence. Hmm. It's why there's a there's sort of a joke. Oh, why aren't you getting off the internet? Well, because I'm enjoying my anger. <laughs> oh, wow. And I think that's a large part of it. We, on some level, even as we may be disgusted by the behavior of a, of a fandom everyone deems to be collapsing, we still watch it out of this sort of perverse pleasure. Uh, it's like the Weird Al song goes, don't want to stare, but you can't look away. <laughs> Which song is that one again? Is it from something new or something old? Oh, let's see here. It's uh, it's the Jerry Springer song. Oh, okay. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Oh, that one. He says, "Where El does like, a lot of." Say? Oh, yeah, that, that's that's a long time ago. That's really old. <laughs> Is that what you want to say, Norman? <laughs> no, I. Well, okay. Where El has a large library of work that he does, and uh, all of them are great. It's just like which one did he sing? Oh, right. Okay, that one. By the way, um, Hardware Store is another legendary one for the Brony fandom. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, but yeah. Uh... But uh, I digress. Mm-hmm. But it, it is all, in a sense, I think it's a part of us wants to be validated uh, through the drama of a fandom ending and how we defi- redefine ourselves in its aftermath. And instead of, eh, instead of really just enjoying it in the now, we're all worrying about what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, I've been a part of multiple fandoms beforehand, but I haven't really interacted with it or with them much. Um, MLP is the first fandom that I've been in that I've fully involved myself or fully throw myself into it. And... I highly enjoy it, and being part of this feels awesome. In all honesty, I haven't been in the drama or whatever it is, because I watch ponies, I immerse myself in ponies just because it's fun, it feels good, and it's one of those scenarios where it's positive. It's a positive fight for me. I don't really understand the negative side of it that much, and I don't pretend to know of it. I get bombarded with it because I have a presence online and that comes with certain eh, conditionals, uh, prices that you didn't, you wouldn't expect going in. And I'm sorry if that sounds haughty or, or I have such an online presence. Oh, look at me. But I've been, I have been party to drama even when I was not even trying to be a part of it. Totally understandable. I mean, it's who we are really, uh, you're more prevalent in the fandom, and I am just a small speck of it on there. But still, it's one of those one things that. where uh, we are involved in one way or another. And getting back on track about the 
ending of a show or a fan or a something, it's kind of sad. I mean, I don't really get why people want it to end. But I'm going to go for the Simpson uh, episode kind of deal because it's been running for how many seasons now? 20 plus? 30 plus now? 30 plus at least. Uh, and people kind of wanted it wanted it to end at season 7. Now it's just dragging on like a zombie. Yes, they actually call it that. Zombie Simpsons. They're not even the same characters anymore. So they claim. Although, Norman, I do want to challenge one thing you said. Mm-hmm. When you say this is who we are uh, in regards to our internet presence, I don't think that's true. I mean, you, you're you not defined by your subscriber count. Oh, no, no. I mean, or, for good. Or your view count or anything like that. That's not the real you. Oh, no. I mean, it's the presence that we show ourselves online. It's what It's the persona that we show to the general public. Yes. Uh, believe it or not, folks at home, I am not... The clean cut, uh, what you call this podcast host that you think I am. In reality, I am a foul mouth. Um, <laughs> how do I put this? I- I'm just your everyday Joe, man. Like, I cuss a lot. I, how do I put this? Well, I, I put a filter in myself now and I try to when I go outside, but when I'm very excited, Silver can attest to this. I have a potty mouth. Yeah, I mean, he, he uses words like... <coughs> and... <coughs> and, oh, don't even get me started on... <laughs> uh, yep, yep. He makes a sailor blush. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I mean, that's the... Um, well, uh, what you call this? To me, that's how I present myself, and that's how I want to carry myself. And if I can carry that persona with in my normal day, that's good. But hey, it's one of those things where sometimes you're hanging out with friends, you have to, well, drop that shield, as they say. Ooh, drop that shield. <laughs> that sounds like it'd be a good rap. <laughs> yeah. I would. I come up with a song, but I'm too white. <laughs> we giddy whack. I have no, I have no rhythm, yo. Dizan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, does that... Uh, do you accept that, Silva, as the answer? Well, I'll run with it that, you know, it's part of who we bring to the online community. But just never never mistake an online persona for a person's true self. Mm, true that, true that. But some people also love to indulge in the ego. They they don't just, it doesn't just define them or think they think it defines them. They try to celebrate in it. And that's where you get a lot of people often saying, this fandom is doomed, it's toxic, it's the end of the world. And we're talking not just ponies. Uh, just yesterday, I was watching a, a person for the Voltron fandom oh, wow. saying, everyone, we can be better than this. We should be better than this. And goodness gravy, the the Star Wars fandom right now. So many people are wanting to say, oh, it's dead. No one will ever be interested in Star Wars again, which... <laughs> I'm sorry. If the Ewoks couldn't and Jar Jar couldn't kill the fandom, ain't, ain't nothing going to kill it. <laughs> True that. I mean, it will put a dent in the fandom, yes, but people losing all interest in it? No, nah, not really. Because, well, like, when, like Silver mentioned, if Ewoks and Jar Jar couldn't kill it, nothing will. And besides, fandoms grow and shrink a lot. It's part of their nature, their organic uh, rhythm, even though it's it's in our case online or electronic based, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. saying it will die and no one will ever even remember it, or you know, there's this fear of being forgotten. I think true, and people wanting it to end because well, it's overstated, it's welcome and whatnot. Uh, there's some valid points to that because like I mentioned before, a Simpson Family Guy and any car. Cartoon, uh, adult cartoon series from Fox. Yeah, they run a really, really long. And p- if people like it, if they can make money out of it, yeah, why not, right? But scenarios like this, wanting it to perish in the wind, I don't know, man. Like, if a show has people wanting to watch it more, I, I think it should end naturally. No when to exit the stage? Yep, yep. 
And a, a good example is, uh, which we call this, Gravity Falls. They had a three-season script ready uh, from beginning, middle, and end, and they ran with it. Even though the show was super popular, they never, well, the original creators never considered to create a, what you call this, um, fourth season. But it seems that the, what you call, um, fans want more. And that's the total opposite of what we're talking now. <laughs> well, fans may not always know what they really want. They think, oh, I really enjoy this. I want another season. But then they they may realize, wait, forcing it to go another season actually took away what we loved about it. Yep. And that's the, was the same scenario with Kim Possible. Kim Possible had three seasons for it. And the movie was the end point. But fans wanted more. And they, well, they got what they wanted. An extra season. And as far as I know, that season didn't really... Wow. It was okay. It was okay. Just okay. They, they had interesting ideas and whatnot. They introduced Miss Go. And that was a nice game changer. Because, hey, she goes good. She looks hot in that teacher's outfit. Oh, yeah. Voice. <laughs> uh, uh, silver. The, the, this is... Was this targeted at a male audience? I like this character because she looks good as a, a teacher. Oh, outfit. no. I mean, like, she goes really awesome. Like, trust me, a lot of fans. <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong button. <laughs> I think both are good. Hmm. Yeah, oh, boy. So, oh, wow. Where was I? Where was I? Yes, fandom ending it there. Hmm. Fandom. Oh, dead. Uh, falling apart. Oh, dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. But still, uh, Silva, have you ever wanted a show to end? Well, no, I just turn it off. <laughs> I mean, Power Rangers was going strong, and I've watched it through middle school, even into mid-high school. Even my, my family started leaning. It's like, maybe you need to stop watching this. <laughs> I took the hint and just stopped watching. Mm -hmm. But even then, I still peeked in just to see what they were true, doing. True, 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 true. I guess in some ways, are people looking for permission to end, to stop watching? They've been through it. It feels weird to leave the ride before it's done. And yet, so maybe by saying this show needs to end, they're really saying, I want to move forward. I just need permission. And the truth is, you don't. Mm. If you want to stop watching, you know, it's your time, your life. There's no shame or judgment if you want to move forward from something else. True that, true that. And in the Brony fandom, we always have this line where, uh, welcome to the fandom. Uh, hope you enjoy the ride. And when somebody asks, uh, where's the uh, stop? We'll say, never. There's no stop. Once you get on, there's no going back. And to that point, it's kind of true, but it's only a joke. In all honesty, you are the only one responsible for enjoying the ride like if you want to watch it you want to be participating in it to your own terms and your own level go ahead nobody's really dictating how you should watch the show or enjoy the show or enjoy the fandom i personally here enjoy the music the art the videos that the fandom have been doing also the official works from uh the Hasbro and IDW in terms of comics and products and whatnot, and even the movies. I highly enjoy those. So that's how I feel, and that's how I want to participate in this fandom. And participating in fandom is good. It's also another good feeling to give back to the fandom. And my way of giving back is to create a podcast. And I give back to the fandom by driving everyone nuts with puns. Yes. but We show our love in different true, ways. True. Does that mean I have that feeling of wanting this to end? Well, in all honesty, how do I put this? There are days where I have thought that, oh, wow, if this episode were to end or this show were to end, what would I do? How would I feel? Or, oh, gosh, I want this to end now. Like, I, I want my life back. <laughs> but those are just ramblings of a bad buffoon. Oh, you've been listening to me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just like this show. I mean, I, I don't want it to end because I see possibilities in the show, in its storytelling, in its character arc. And like, seriously, if 
we were to have a spin-off series about the main uh, the student six or even Starlight and Friends, I would I enjoy it. I would I would really enjoy it because I see potential in their story. Sometimes the ideas for one story can translate into another. I wrote an article about this uh, for Equestria Daily a while back, pondering the peak. Just because the f- the show has ended doesn't mean the fandom's thoughts and ideas have gone away themselves. In fact, we often carry the best parts and the worst parts of a fandom forward if we join yet another fandom. True that, true that. There's a lot of examples. Um, I'm going to recall a story that I or recall a video that I recently watched and it's about this guy who hosted one of the first Magic the Gathering convention in uh, New York, was it? I don't really remember. But he hosted a kind of tournament and it was in the... Uh, ooh, it was in 1994. And yeah, it was really old days and whatnot. And he was watching the video with you know, the guy and whatnot. And he came from a comic book background in terms of ho- uh, holding conventions. And he took what he learned from that and carried it over to Magic. And now he's just really successful at Magic the Gathering. So yeah. It's Magic. <laughs> yes. But Silver, um, what are your thoughts, man? Like, I I feel like we're all over the place right about now. Well, because it's a far-reaching thing. I mean, we we've talked about the ego and the need for drama. We've talked about fear of losing it. Sometimes we're so afraid of losing a fandom, we, we actually act to undermine it just so we can get it over with. It's like pulling off a band aid. Yeah, true that. True that. I mean, like I mentioned before, I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this show to end because. I enjoy it so much. The interaction I have with the fans fills me with positive vibes. You can find ways to bring that positivity to other actions and um, maybe make your own content. There's no... Again, it's not letting the fandom define you or limit you. It's a it's a testing ground for where you can express yourself and carry that forward. So when people are, are afraid that well, here's a question. Are people afraid that the their best selves, the work they're going to do, will go away if the fandom does? That is a really interesting question there, Silva, because there's a few theories on this. And from what I can see, um, okay, I'm just going to throw a dart at a popular brony per- personality from way back in the days. Um, the Living Tombstone. You, you know who he is, right, Silva? I am aware, yeah. He was a brony musician. Uh, he did a lot of good remixes and whatnot, and he was very talented. And one day, he slowed down his brony content and stopped. But it doesn't mean he stopped cold turkey. He went on and moved on to other things. And now he is, well, let's just say that he is really, really well off. He's doing music for video games, um, other things and whatnot. And I think I, I haven't really heard much about what he's doing right now, but he's well off right now. Well, good. I mean, you know, we wish wish great success on people. True. And that was him ending uh, the fandom on his own terms. And well, like you mentioned before, Silver, he jumped off the bus and continued doing something else. And there's nothing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned. There are, there have been stories of people trying to do new things and fans being very resistant, saying, no, go back to doing the pony stuff. That's what we originally liked about your work. And that's probably not the best message to send to people. We only liked you because you did the pony thing. That's going to make them bitter as can be. Oh, yeah. I mean, that will push the person even further than um what you want like you want him to do more pony content oh no i shall not because i do not like the ponies anymore blah 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 and i'm not 100 sure like another example of a popular brony personality who's well off now is digibro <laughs> uh, you may want to revise okay that. it's been uh, a while since i watched his content what happened man well he's been very outspoken on twitter on various subjects which I think is damaging uh, his, brand? his presence yeah. within the anime community. Uh, all right. Then. So, yeah, I'm just going to go in the past tense then. He was in the Brony 
community uh, as an analyst, and he carried that over to the anime, and he found success. I'm just gonna close it there. Whatever happens beyond that, I got no idea. So yeah, uh, sometimes shifting to another fandom or ending one and opening another one is, well, you learn a few things and you carry it over. And again, that's life. That's growth. I, I'd be horrified if people thought that they had nothing to their future other than ponies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know necessarily what comes next, but I know my life does not begin and end with the brony fandom. True, true. I mean, your online personality begins with pro- ponies or bronies. Or, you know, it begins with ponies, but we got no idea where it might lead you. It might. We got no idea where you will end up in the future. Probably, uh, there's a high chance you might be doing um, movie reviews or even uh, video games and whatnot. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. Or I hope to someday have my own work. Uh put out there. Ah, true that. Published author, perhaps. Mm-hmm. That would be good. That'd be very good. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, well, so, Silver, I've been talking a lot. Why don't you take over for a bit? Well, let's see. I'm just, I'm thinking of, like, big events that have happened that everyone seems to think are signaling the death or downfall of a fandom. There was uh, the Szechuan sauce with the, Steve, uh, with the Rick and Morty yep, fandom. Yep. Uh, there was really hostile backlash to star wars oh wow and how everyone's everyone's now saying the last jedi killed it er, er, er. which again i don't truly believe that's a bit hyperbolic what are other fandoms doctor who i haven't heard from the doctor who fandom in a while they're gonna have a new doctor in short order mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's a game changer because it's the first female doctor canon female doctor so yeah, uh, well, from what I heard, a lot of the fandom are resistant to this. Well, there is often resistance to change. Oh, yeah, true that. But hey, um, we'll see, right? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I started off naming the episode, Why Do Fans Want Things to End? And the more we talk about it, I don't see it. Because it could be us. We are in a circle where we don't really see things ending. Maybe we should have another person on to balance or to counterbalance this um, discussion, but I don't see things ending. I, I see things um, plateauing at some point. And if a show naturally ends and the fandom still carries on without the show, that's awesome. If not, eh. Well, see, I think, I think it's misleading. When everyone talks about it, things ending, there's a temptation to think, oh, they want it to end. I think it's more our fans afraid things are going to end. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is true, and uh, I don't know, man. Like I remember when watching Kim Possible, and I was a big fan of it. And when the final episode aired, I sighed a sigh of relief because oh, okay, uh, they ended the show, and I'm happy for the characters. They they had a happy endings, and everybody was happy. And even though they're not going to do any more episodes and the show has ended officially, I'm, well, let's just say I'm happy. I'm glad that I was along for the ride. Because I'm happy, clap along if you feel like happiness is the truth. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's one thing. Well, anything else to add, Silver? Because yeah, I mentioned before, I've been talking a lot. I did not get to see uh, Kim Possible. I was in that phase where you think being grown up means you have to leave behind uh, entertainment like cartoons. Oh, or games like, yeah, those magic gatherings. But honestly, uh, the fact that I'm talking about and reviewing My Little Pony, yeah, you get over that in good yep, order. Yep. Oh, man. Silver, have you ever played Magic the Gathering? No, I did some Yu-Gi-Oh, but I never inhaled. The complexity, and partly because of my experience in Yu-Gi-Oh, I played it, I tried it, I had enough, I think, but I was, I realized it was time for me to pull the stop on it. So I had no desire to replace that with yet another card game. I love the artwork in Magic. Yeah, ma- Magic the Gathering artwork is just awesome. And yeah, this is a bit off topic, just because I'm on a Magic kick, and sometimes I wish I've been 
a part of the magic fandom for a while. Like I, I wish I was in there from the very beginning, from down zero kind of deal. And Silva, so, uh, how much is this rounded up? Uh, wow, thirty five thousand dollars. Yep, and thirty five thousand dollars for a card, mind you. A a card. Yes. Was this card written written with gold? No. It was, okay, <laughs> if I were to mention this, probably you would know. And this card is called the Black Lotus. It was one of the original staple cards from way back when in the days. Like, this was just the awesomest card ever to have. And a lot of people played it, like, normally, like any card game would. Like, any any card game. Like, nobody really give a care because it's just a piece of cardboard. Uh, like, that came out in 94, I guess. So yeah, a lot of people really, really didn't really know how this game would go. And like I mentioned before, I wish I was part of it so I could have stacks of cart to sell off. You know what I mean? Well, there's a flip side to that. When I when I was in college, I was part of a gaming uh, mm. club. Just for, you know, just to get together with some folks and have a play some games. And one guy was adamant that he would never play Magic the Gathering because drug dealers in New York would give out, uh, would pay, you know, they, they'd they accept Magic the Gathering cards as payment oh, wow. for okay. kids. Okay. Because then they could then sell off those cards for Boku to Bucks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And maybe that's another reason why some people outside of fandom say that it needs to end they hear about a portion of it unfortunately fandoms are often defined by their weaker or worst elements and they declare no this needs to end to thump their moral righteousness Mm -hmm. and again that's ego that's you think you're defining yourself by what you hate or oppose and that's not the real you either but a lot of people think it is because they're not sure without that what am i I remember a Baltimore newspaper had a writer who was, she was gung-ho to get rid of bronies. Oh. She dug through all the worst moments. I believe one of these was the Down with Molestia movement. Oh, okay. And, and she focused solely on that. Nothing else. That's not well represented. The fandom has done a lot of good things, too. And... Well, but... But this person was not interested in in a complete view of the fandom, only only showing the most negative aspects because it gave her grounds to denounce it. I could see that perspective or I can see that view because could you just imagine if you're a mother who enjoys the show, a casual fan, you might say, and suddenly this comes to light. What would you think? You want the show to stop. Like you, This is a bad show. I don't want my... Uh, little Tina to watch this. This this is bad. Little Tina, is this from Borderlands? Tiny Tina? I, uh, it, Blow everything up. It was a... That came out on the spot, but no, not really. <laughs> See, I played Borderlands. I know Tiny Tina. Yeah, she's so. insane. Ha ha! Kill all the babies! <laughs> and yet no one uh, no one raised an issue with that fandom. Uh, because it's dependent on the, what you call this, uh, age group. Yeah, with some people who are calling for the end of a fandom are not themselves fans. They've just assigned themselves a certain moral authority. True that. Honestly, okay, um I'm putting myself out there by saying this, but I want EA to stop making sports game or NFL or even whatever license they have. Like I want those companies to open their license up to everyone because Having a monopoly on a game doesn't promote innovation. Hence why I want EA to stop. I can see the similarities here, but I am not a fan. I am an outsider in this. Well, like I say, sometimes if that's the only data on hand, people will just say, oh, this seems bad. It needs to stop. And like with this lady who wanted to denounce bronies, don't have enough data at hand for the counter view, the positives. However, we're talking about EA and, well, they've certainly made news lately with how badly they've handled the Star Wars franchise oh, that's true. and many other games. So, 
I don't know if it's a perfect analogy. Yeah, true that. And also at the same time too, we don't see the positive that EA has been doing. We don't really see that or they didn't really show it. So uh, is it fair? No, right? Well, honestly, I am I do genuinely question, is EA doing well by its audience? Because all the news I hear definitively says, no, no, it is not. True. Yeah, so so uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I, I think it's important to acknowledge our own limited interaction because we don't normally we don't hear the good news about production companies. The gaming community and gaming journalism probably doesn't devote a lot of time to the positives because it's that old uh, journalistic theme: if it bleeds, it leads. We only report the bad news because that's what gets the views. But at the same time, too, there's a new trend of heartwarming stories where. People want those uh, heartwarming stories. Like people want to hear those good, feel good stories because it makes you feel good in this sucky world. Well, mostly I just stop hearing what other people want to say about a game and just go play the game myself or go play a game I like. That's <laughs> yeah, all true. really needs to happen. True that. True that. True that. Right, but still, um, I I think we are off track a bit. Or are we on track? I don't know. Well, maybe a little. Well. Like I say, it's the concept of people want something to end because they've only heard the worst. They don't know about the best parts. Or people want it to end because they're they're tired of it. Like, they're fans, but it jumped the shark like Fonzie did. Hey. Yeah, so we haven't really talked about that aspect. So yes, jumping the shark is a term where... Uh, well, actually, the, the term is when a show has been running too long... And they ha- they run out of ideas and they are doing stupid things or they're just dragging the story along just because it's creating money, something like that, whatever it is. And the term also comes from a really old show called Happy Days where one of the lead characters, Fonzie, was performing a stunt um, and said stunt is him water skiing and jumping over a shark. Yes. I thought he jumped a shark with his motorcycle, but either way... It was then that fans knew they were out of ideas. And this was now just artificial conflicts. Uh-huh. And some people wanted to end. For example, like I mentioned before, Simpsons, Family Guy, uh, South Park probably, and American Dad, and so on. Like all those long-running shows that seem like it should end now. I love Mitch Larson. Uh, he made the joke in Slice of Life. As all the ponies are, are rushing towards the... Uh, town hall for the wedding they uh they jump a a plushy shark (laughs) yep yep his little way of saying wow we're really out of ideas here aren't we (laughs) but in all honesty i I don't know for ponies in my mind in my opinion i feel like there's more story to tell there may be more stories to tell but there's also the question what stories are they willing to tell ah yes that is also true can they invest in the voice actors and actresses needed to go into an in-depth story on a certain character. Or, or is that outside the budget? Mm, true. And or is there even more... Oh, sorry. Or is there even... Um, what you call this? Interest in a character. Like I mentioned before, I would love to see Starlight and her group of friends interact. I don't think that would happen because A, John DeLance is expensive and B, uh, John DeLance is expensive. <laughs> I realized that's the same thing, but it was so important, I thought I should repeat it Indeed. twice. But no, it's true. I mean, you you have a awesome character, which is Discord, who is voiced by the talented John DeLancey. Problem is, John DeLancey is expensive. So having him on more than once is going to cost Hasbro an arm and a leg. And having him serialize? Nah, man. Hasbro don't have that much money. So there's always the question of, you know, what do we want to do? What can we do? Maybe, And sometimes it's also, we're looking at a reboot of My Little Pony with Gen 5 because eight seasons in, probably nine, it's hard for new people to jump on to this point. Oh, well, true that, true that. If, uh, yeah, I mean, the show has been running for almost, what, nine to ten years now? Well, I'd say about eight years. Mm. It's, did it really start in 2011? Yes, at October 10th, 2011, uh, 2010. Oh, there you go. Yeah, if I were to have a kid, she would be around, uh, what, 
nine years or eight eight years. Yeah, she will be eight years old. Yep. Well, there you go. But uh, sometimes people are like, hey, let this stop so that something new can be born. True that. And that's what's been happening with, well, uh, other shows. Transformers, Turtles, uh, Ponies, for uh, example. And what else? Titans? Not really. Oh, huh. Titans, I think people are saying stop that now before it becomes painful. Oh, wow. F Batman. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the thing. Um. You and me are a f- we're, we're fans of the original Teen Titans, right? The cartoon, yes, yes. yeah. So let's let's look at it from that lens, right? So let's look at it from that lens because um, in the lens of ponies, we're a bit biased. So let's look at Titans. Um, we enjoy the story, the animation, uh, the drama that he had, and yeah, we highly enjoy the show. Suddenly, we watch Teen Titans Go, and we are saying to ourselves. What is this show? Why? Why is this? Like, this is nonsensical. Why is this here? Oh my god! I want this to end. Please stop. Oh no! I said uh, something very different. I wa- the only time I've really watched Teen Titans Go was when I was in the hospital, <laughs> about to have an appendectomy. All right. It was v- very sudden emergency appendectomy. Uh, and I'm sitting there. My a friend of mine is is staying with me. And we watched this episode Teen Titans Go, and I look at her afterwards and I say, I'm ready to go under the <laughs> knife now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, wow. That- <laughs> so, yeah, there's a story for you. Yeah. But, yeah, some people say it needs to end because it's not living up to the original. Mm-hmm. It's not living up to the dream. Mm-hmm. But in that way, they're not saying the fandom ends, just this representation of it. Yeah, true. But that's uh, how to put this. <laughs> there's two sides to the coin for this one. The fans want Teen Titan Go to end because it's not really representing the show well enough. It's not really doing a good job. But the problem is the network sees a lot of cash coming in because of the toys and whatnot. And the younger audience highly enjoy Teen Titans Go. On the flip side of this, uh, Transformers the animated series, the recent one where they did... Mm, you know which Transformers I'm talking about, right? The um, kind of hyper-stylized car- uh, 2D cartoon one? Oh, Transformers yeah, Animated. Transformers Animated. So, that one, even though... You know what? That's a bad example. I, I like it. People don't... Uh, they could didn't, or majority people didn't. Um, yeah, let's go for Thundercats, the 2011 version of Thundercats. That one was awesome. The art style was good. The... Uh, story was awesome. People love it a lot. Problem is, network didn't, and they cancelled it after one season. And this was the same people who did Voltron, Legendary Defender. So you can guess there. <laughs> well, they they continue to do good jobs, in my opinion. But yeah, people will say this, that, and the other thing. I'll need to end because, again, our egos are saying we dictate the world. Yeah, that, or even networks saying that, oh, this show's not giving us any money, so let's stop. Well, that's more of a corporate side. True, but... And that's a whole other world. There's a world I can never truly penetrate with my thoughts, mm. because here we are watching My Little Pony uh, airing early in certain countries. So just like, what are you guys doing? What is the thought process here? There's been speculation that all these early releases are meant to disentangle My Little Pony from Discovery Family so they can uh, air Gen 5 on a different channel, mm. possibly even Hulu. Hulu now? Wow, okay. Um, that's going to be troublesome for people who doesn't have access to Hulu. Yeah, I'm not sure. But there's a theory there. I mean, uh, that's totally besides the point of discussion, but still, there is a theory there. I- I'm just thinking really hard right about now because the show was on the hub, and the hub was... Uh, Hasbro's own TV network that they tried to pull off in the early 2011s. Or was it 2010? I don't really remember. But still, uh, it was something they they tried to pull off but failed later in the following years to come. And they got eaten up by Discovery. And having them trying to run off to another network seems about logical. Well, we'll see. This is purely speculation right now. Yeah, true, 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 true. Uh, well, <clears throat> we've been at this for a while, and I feel like we're going around in a really strange circle. 
Well, it's not like there's a definitive answer to this. Mm, true, 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 true. And like you mentioned before, fandom come and go, and there's no right answer for this discussion. Even though if I want to find a finalization, the more we talk, the more I find new ways to contradict myself. Well, that's the thing. It's Again, it's trying to understand people, which people are not exactly consistent beings in and of themselves. They say they want a, sh- a show should end, but they may be saying they're actually afraid it will end. Mm-hmm. Or on the other spectrum, if a show is bad, they want it to end, but the network says, nah, because it's too good, it's making us money. Or the opposite, the fandom love the show and they, do, they want another season, but network says, nah, it's not making us any money, so we have to quit it. Firefly. <laughs> Legend of Korra, almost. Well, this Korra got an ending. The one thing we haven't talked about is the frustration... You talked about Kate, uh, Kim Possible ending. Uh-huh. But what about all them shows like uh, Sonic Sat AM? Oh. They just ended without any closure. There was cliffhangers. 90s cartoons loved cliffhangers. Oh, that is so true, my friend. Oh, my God. Now I remember. Sonic Sat AM was awesome. The way that they ended was really awesome. They had a high-impact episode where the stakes are high, the stakes are real, and then... Yeah, Robotnik was defeated, and suddenly Snively came along, and he was taking over, and there's a red eyes kind of creature, almost like a Metal Sonic. Aha, season two probably, or season three, whatever it is. But no, none. None at all. (laughs) Oh, wow, yeah. So, that's our artificial ending. Yeah. So, I don't know, that's just sort of a bitter feeling, because you feel like you... You weren't ready for the ride to end, and yet it left without you. It stopped abruptly. Yep, and you without your safety belt. <laughs> yeah, go, go fly. Wee! Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but I, I think that's about it for now. I mean, we could go on, but I feel like we're just spinning around in a circle where our conversation is not leading us to a definitive end, nor is it giving enlightenment to our discussion. I think we've had we may have had some enlightenment. I can't speak for the audience. Sure that, I mean, I felt some enlightenment, but not like Zenyatta did. But still, this, <laughs> uh, but still, this conversation has been enlightening for me, and I felt like I grown a bit and kind of understand a bit of what I'm feeling, a bit. Well, there you go. That's all one can ask for. And in the end, it's not. Why do fans want a series to end or a show to end? It's do they want it to end or do they want to leave it? Because in all honesty, a show will carry on with or without you. With or without you. Come on, sing along. With or without you. I don't remember the song, man. Oh, that, you're making me feel old again, Norman. The NBA show is falling apart. It's all over. Oh, no. Oh, no. We need to sell that card silver, that $35,000 card. Dude, if I could sell that, I'd probably be set for life for a good couple of years. Here's just one of my dream wishes. I wish I had a time machine to go back in time to buy a booster box of Magic the Gathering, like a few booster box at a really cheap price back in the day. And then like crack open and get that card, sleeve it and give it in mint condition and sell it off for 35000 Yay. I was just going to say, I said set for life for a couple of months. That's a very strange contradiction. <laughs> hey, you think having a time machine is cheap? Oh, that'd be something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anywho, Silver, um, do you have anything more to add? No, I think we've explored at least the idea of, of our egos, our fears, uh, what the networks want, what fans want. There's a lot of things in play, but the truth is... As long as someone enjoys a product, I don't think a fandom ever truly dies. That is true. It just changes size. Yeah, that is true because even, okay, let's just say uh, if a friendship is magic ends at season nine, uh, just imagine, just look at the toy industry or the classic pony toys like G1 or G3 or so on. There's still fans holding fan conventions for those. Yep. And it will continue ever onwards. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But still, I I do wish or I do hope that Pony still carry on for another two more years, and yeah, I I don't want this show to end, man. Like, I really enjoy this. I I have 
good friends. I I met a lot of awesome people. I met a lot of good friends. And yeah, I, I feel proud to be a part of this fandom and also this podcast. It changed my life for lack of a better word. <laughs> well, there you go. But anywho, anything to top that, Silver? Well, I certainly have done things I never would have expected. Refined my editing and art and uh, graphical skills as a result. So yeah, there's growth, and that growth doesn't go away with the show. Indeed, indeed. So no fear of that. It carries over to the new thing that you'll be doing, which is to talk about Overwatch. <laughs> Actually, that will be my next video. My hope is by the time this goes live, I'll have my Reinhardt the Warrior uh, video up. Audience at home, we did not rehearse this. <laughs> yeah, Norman's already close to breaking. Now, by the way, <laughs> so anyway, if you guys at home have any questions, questions, or suggestions for the show, you can do so at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. My per- sorry, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on DeviantArt uh, under MLP hyphen silver hyphen quill, where I post the Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics. You can find me at MLP Silver Quill on Twitter, where I try to keep people in the loop on production updates uh, and engage lightning bliss and gift wars. And you can find me on YouTube under After the Fact Silver Quill. Just do a search and I will appear. And every Wednesday, I post on Equestria Daily with an editorial or comic review. All right, all right. All those are awesome. And be sure to check him out, guys, because Silver Quill here is an awesome dude. Uh, if you came from Silver and watch us here, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to the show. I hope you enjoy what our banter is. But if you are from this show and haven't checked Silver out yet, what are you doing? Go. He has a lot of good content there. He is really amazing. Mm-hmm. And also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitch Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLife.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, subscribe to this show that you're listening now. The Review and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, well, you'll hear us talk about pony episodes, comics, movies. And sometimes we do discussion like this one. Yes, or probably other discussions. What was the last discussion that we did, Silver? I don't remember. Hmm, the last discussion discussion? If, if you remember. If not, then hey, uh, show us what we know. <laughs> hey! Well... It's been a while, because I feel like the last discussion was The Princess Bride, but that might count as a review. Uh, if I were to remember, right, by not cheating and go to the MBS Show uh, YouTube page and look at its playlist of awesome content over there, I think the last discussion we had was... Give me a second while I check the MBS Show playlist. Let's see, yeah. Uh, we were talking about when heels turn to face. Enjoy in the team. Ah, there you go. Starlight Glimmer, Vegeta. Yay. All that good stuff. Yay. Every, yeah, that was a fun discussion. I like that one. That one was really fun. <laughs> uh, so anyway, where was I? Yes, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat. My stuff like Tristan, Charles, Starstream, Lucky Knight, and also Amy. Thank you guys for being awesome. And well, stay awesome, my friends. So anywho, uh, Silver, before I end this, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, I believe it is it is time to get back to reviews. It's time to talk about the parent map. Yes, where we get to see Starlight, Glimmer, and, and Sunburst return home and be totally embarrassed. Oh, God. It's another one of those every day. <laughs> Yep, yep. So, yeah, I think my wish came true when I mentioned I want more parents. There you go. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Requil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. So, Silver, people say they want things to end. So, does this mean that the podcast is ending? Only for the moment. Although, I'll close with a quote from Red vs. Blue. Everyone thinks the world is going to end in their time, but the truth is, none of us are that cool or interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah.